Lincoln Park, Cinco de Mayo. The celebration ended prematurely. Too many gangs in one place. When the police unit came to the riot squad, it was just a big massacre. That's what happened in Lincoln Park. Monday morning, staff meeting at the Gang Violence Reduction Project, GVRP. They're ex-gang members hired by the state to keep the lid on East L.A. gangs. This meeting, pinpoint the cause of the trouble. Get out in the streets, cool things down. One of the dudes from Rockwood got beat up pretty bad. He, he took out his eye and he's in the hospital dying. So you know what Rockwood's going to do now. 31-year-old Stephen Basulto was a member of GVRP and a former gang member, a veteran of East L.A. turf wars. In the 1970s, the worst period of bloodshed in the east side, he was known as a pistolero, a shooter. Now he's a peacekeeper in his old neighborhood. This afternoon, he's trying to keep his homeboys, Vatos, out of a fight between two rival gangs, Rockwood Stoners and El Loyo. You Vatos try to stay away from the park as much as possible, to stay away from Rockwood, because you know the whole Stoners are going to be going up there too. And I don't want none of you Vatos getting hurt behind that. Here we're all a family, and they're our older brothers, and they give us advice and we take it. I don't want them growing up the way I did ducking, going to the store, looking over my shoulder everywhere I went, you know, not knowing when I'm going to catch the bully with my name on it. Keeping the peace is risky business. That's clearly evident every spring when nearly 15 of East LA's most notorious gangs, some of them traditional rivals for generations, all meet for a game of handball. Every time this, this tournament comes up, all rivalries are put aside. Uh, for the meantime, uh, all, all people are getting to know other people from neighborhoods that they might not have uh, got to talk to or meet before. They might have heard of them. Uh, they get to find out and say, oh, so you're Casper. Oh, so you're uh, Django. You're uh, Loco or Mike or whatever. There's nothing we can do to bring all the old past back. So what we just do is we just, little by little, we'll just let it die out. Miguel? All right. And so the afternoon of detente comes to an end. No one is so naive to suggest it'll last a long time, but this idea, a meeting of rival gangs, goes one step further. If it worked for them, perhaps it can work for their children. Give me the count that you have. Five. Okay, five, Alfred. Working in gang neighborhoods is not all about intervention. One of the aims for GVRP, target the youth from 14 hardcore areas. Get them away from the neighborhood for a while. See what's outside. We try to get them together so they can know each other. And uh, when they get older, you, you know, they, they won't be fighting against each other or anything, you know. He's a soft touch today, but Richard Rodriguez has done big time. Second degree murder, spent time on death row. His time now is spent targeting youth, a new generation. Is there eight by 10? Okay, so this one will go good on this one, but we're gonna have to send it. That is our future right, right here. You know, these are the kids that uh, we uh, uh, try to help in any kind of way, hopefully that, you know, living in the neighborhood, you know, that they don't get into any kind of gangs, any kind of uh, drugs, and that's what we're about. We want the arrest, we want the weapons. Pick the doors, open the doors, and call the people out. Sheriff's Department, open the door, we have a search warrant. He is not the king of East L.A. Right now, step out. Step out. Walk out to the car. Wake up call in a neighborhood known as Little Valley. Another step in getting gang kingpins off the streets. We'll go and see if the guy's on parole or probation, what his past record is. Uh, if he's on uh, active parole, we'll violate him that way. Uh, we'll do anything we can to keep him in jail because we've identified him as, as being either hardcore or one of the people that steers the pot out there. Jimmy probably wrote it because he's first. Why would he put himself last? Jimmy Toro, Angel, Cricket, Snake. Sergeant Tony Argot and Herman Treviso are key players in East L.A.'s anti-gang unit known as Operation Safe Streets, OSS. Their strength? Gathering street gang intelligence from gang members, from informants, even off walls. The tail, uh, it's a satanic type emblem line for uh, the stoners that are that are on here. The lot stoners, that's a stoner group. You can see they put up the date, 1989, just start. So this is a gang that's just just developing, just trying to take over some territory right now. Another so thing, too, that we should bring up, it's on a cross, which you would see in a cemetery, so that means they're just starting to, just to start to kill, also. Park, 
Before any major bust goes down, there are countless nights spent cruising East L.A.'s seven and one-half square miles, getting to know the players among the area's 58 known street gangs, their nicknames, searching for anything that'll tell them where trouble might be heading. They teaching you guys how to be gangbangers? No, we already know. And sword. Okay. That's yeah, just starting, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Good. You're just starting. How old are you? 14. You never been arrested, Carlos? One. Okay, what was that for? That's GTA? Mm -hmm. How long ago? About a year ago. Ah! There's my mom. She ain't here. You gotta get me in trouble now, man. There's no reason to run from us, right, partner? If you're not doing nothing wrong, we're not gonna do nothing to you. What's your birthday, Carlos? 10, 15, 10, 28. Well, what's it gonna be? 10, 28. What do they call you out here? Hmm? Yeah, what do they call you? Spazer. Spazer? Yeah. Where'd you get that name at? What was your nickname used to be? Huh? Let me see your eyes. Let me see your arms. Where's your tattoos? Tattoos. Come on. You got your viejo's name somewhere, man. Any information we can get, we collect. And later on, if they turn into be a, a real hardcore gang, we use that stuff to prosecute them or to arrest them or to, to identify them or whatever we can do to get them off the streets. Once there were no gang homicides in East Los Angeles last year. This year, there have been two. But on this night, Argon and Treviso thought number three was right in front of them. Vente, 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 vente. ¿Qué pasó? Hey, come here. Oye, vente. Vente. Todos manos aquí no se mueva. I didn't grab it, I didn't see it. Oh, me voy a dejar matar porque me roba mil dólares y luego están me quieren matar. Calmate, señor. These guys are all family. The younger guy stole about a thousand dollars worth of jewelry from the older man. The younger guy's already given him five hundred dollars. He's supposed to pay him five hundred dollars again, and he didn't come up with the money, so the older man was going to kill him. What's up, guys? Just be cool, all right? All right, then. Despite the relative calm in the streets, the cops say it could be the calm before the storm. Seems young Chicano gangs are now bowing to a lot of outside influence. They uh, are starting to pick up a lot of characteristics from uh, uh, black gangs down in South L.A. and that they'll do random drive-by shootings. These guys are taking on everybody just to make a reputation for themselves, and that's what we're finding is a problem. Welcome to a life of crime. Huh? Spazer? Is that it? Good luck. You're going to see a lot of mothers going to the cemetery on Sundays to see their sons on Mother's Day. Like Chris's uh -huh. son. Yeah, Chris's son. You walk down a little there. bit, there's mostly all, the, all the kids in the neighborhood are Irene's son. Are there in the resurrection? They're all the boys. Are there. And so are the sons of Rita Figueroa, 17 year old Bobby, shot and killed in 1971, and Ronnie, killed three years later, also at age 17. Both victims of gang warfare. I used to feel so bad because. I never wanted that. I always wanted peace. I said, you know, I've suffered enough, you know, I can't take it no more. So Time hasn't healed her sense of loss. Still in the nearly 20 years since her son's deaths, Rita Figueroa has helped other women whose sons, brothers, or friends have been killed on the streets. Their group is called Concerned Parents, moms from rival neighborhoods who have wedged themselves between warring gangs and gunfire. The group formed during the mid-1970s amid the bloodiest turf wars in East Los Angeles. Parents turned to the church and found an ally in Brother Modesto Leon. Brother Modesto is the spiritual force behind Concerned Parents, who are also working the neighborhoods in South Central Los Angeles and Pomona. Modesto taught them how to network, how to get tough with their kids, how to keep them in school, and keep them alive. And that takes a lot of guts from the parents. Mm -hmm. I had an example last week of a young man who was picked up by the probation and now he's in juvenile hall and he's going to camp. But it took us almost six months to get the parent to turn him in, to say, I can't handle him, rather than wait for him to die. We used to call each other when the boys were going to go up into that area. Somehow we knew. And we used to tell him, be careful, the boys aren't going in that area, please, you know, keep the kids in sight. So I would call Rita, Rita, you know, certain things are going to come down in your neighborhood. And 
And the boys knew we were doing this. I mean, knowing that we were getting together, they couldn't stop us because we, we were, you know, we're tired of it. Put some tortillas on there. Community functions, like a neighborhood barbecue, are where the groups of moms do their most effective work. Taking the time to listen, then using kindness to make a strong point. I lost my mom. Yeah. You did? When? The only thing you need. She passed away in June of 87 when I got out of drink. But before she died, I told her that I was doing real good. Right. Hey, clean your mouth. But she's hurt anyway, you know, even though you try to do real good, she, she's hurt inside in her heart uh, from what you went through. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My heart goes out for them because they, they, they'll do anything, anything they can to help you. You know, they'll go out of their way just to help one gang member. You know, the concerned mothers, I mean, I'm glad they're here and, and we need them. We, we can't, we can't let nobody hurt them. What I feel so good about is when I'm walking down the, I don't care which area it is, okay? And the boys come out and, and they hug me and I feel real good. It's just, right. you know, giving me the feeling that my sons can see me.